Welcome to room 619 of the Dresden or Dresden A and O Hotel Stroke Hostel in of course Dresden. I have booked here for two nights with booking.com and I have paid for a single room 44 euros per night, room only, no breakfast. I asked for a room on a high floor, a quiet room on a high floor, with a view towards the city, and that's exactly what I've got. In fact, the 619 is at the end of the corridor. So I'm not on the top floor, but I'm in a good place, so I'm happy enough with this. So what do you get for your money? For your 44 euros a night, well you get two beds, not one. So I shall do here what I did in Leipzig, for those people that have seen that video. I will take the mattress from this one, put it on that one, and then tilt that up against the wall. You've got bedside lighting, which I'm not liking the look of too much. It looks like it could bash you quite easily, unless you can point it away from yourself. Perfect. It's super! Um, you get some artwork on the yellow wall, reasonable looking curtains and of course a window which is nicely insulated and opens fully. And if I zoom forward you will see the Dresden skyline somewhere over there. Where are we? So there's the frying kirker, I think, possibly. Or the. Oh no! That might be further that way. That could be the cross church. Cruise kirker, I think. And there is the main railway station, the Hauptbahnhof. This is called the Dresden Hauptbahnhof AO Hostel. It took me about, well, nearly 10 minutes with crossing the road and waiting for the signals to drag my suitcase here. Um, the, the actual exit out of the station is quite a long way down there. And conveniently located straight across the road is a kebab shop. What more could a traveller ask for other than trains? So I'm liking this room so far. I was met by a very friendly receptionist who spoke perfect English. His name was Eric and I award him full marks for his customer service. Well done Eric, take a day off. Right, what else do you get then? So plug sockets for if you've got things to charge. There's two there, there's one there. Uh, and there's another up there where the television is. Notice that this is a nice flat screen television, not like the horrible thing was in the Leipzig hostel. And then you've got this odd wardrobe arrangement thing again. So it's not quite a wardrobe and it's not quite a shelf, it's a bit of everything. What I don't like is how that sticks out. And it's quite narrow and then these stick down. So I'm going to be limboing past that like I have been. So. What I'll probably try and do, if I can, yep, yeah, is point the lights upwards. That seems much more logical. And you'll notice you'll get a full length mirror to check yourself out before you go out on the town. Right, let's have a look in the bathroom. So the bathroom is compact, but it has everything that it needs to have. We've got the sink. We've got the uh, all-important hand wash and mirror. Hey! Uh, we've got the loo rolls and the hairdryer, a <laughs> vega, of course, for the ladies. Or, of course, those gentlemen who like to pointlessly preen their bouffants, which is all going to fall out anyway. Uh, and then, not that I'm bitter. And then we've got uh, a towel rail, heated towel rail here, which I used the one in Leipzig yesterday to dry my, I wash my clothes and dry my clothes because I've run out of some things, like you do. And uh, it dried them in hours, it was good. 
we've got the uh, toilet down there and a shower which again unfortunately there's a bit of a step down as you can see that's quite a tall tail there's no non-slipness on the bottom and there are no grab rails so that could be better it's a Tapara Club I've never had a Tapara Club shower before so it's my first one fantastic right anyway this is my room one little spin here I'm now going to transform it to show you what I mean uh, by rearranging the furniture just to make it a little bit more user friendly watch this see how much more roomy it is now and see how comfortable that bed looks now oh yes I'm gonna sleep well tonight kids right I've got to go got to spruce my goose because I'm out on the town tonight I'll feed his own pets well this is the morning after my check-in this is my one free day in Dresden the one day I was gonna climb the frying kirke to the very top to admire the views over the city and the one day where there is freezing fog <laughs> I guess the best laid plans well you know the saying anyway so this is what Dresden fog looks like just in case you're interested It's quite dense fog. And when the fog lifts, here's the view. Okay, I've just come outside into the corridor. And I'm just gonna... Oh, I can't open the window because of the router. But that's why I've got such a good internet signal. Well, I was just going to show you uh, this part of Dresden, which is called uh, Sudvorstadt. Sorry for the pronunciation. Now, I just want to say that I wouldn't want to be in room 622 for definite. I also wouldn't want to be in 614 or 615 because they're both next to this door, all three of them. Now this door is noisy. Most people just let it close itself. Now when this place is busy, can you imagine that? If you're in 622, which is there. That would make me very annoyed. Right, let's have a look at the lift. So it's EG for down to reception. So FB. Officers, 13 person left. It goes up to the seventh floor and then it stairs up to the sky bar on the eighth floor. The sky bar is open from six o'clock on an evening and it gives you panoramic views over this part of the city. I'll try and get there tonight if I can. And for your reassurance, the lift is video controlled.
This is the ground floor Wi-Fi zone, which is a free Wi-Fi zone. Or you can pay to use a computer. Daily newspaper. Things for sale. In a comfy area. Well, welcome to CSI Dresden. Um, bad news, I'm afraid. I won't be recommending this hostel anytime soon, or hostel hotel as it calls itself. I was lying here asleep at 5.40 this morning when I was suddenly awoken by a noise. I looked up to find my door open and somebody just leaving with my jacket which was on here I shouted at them, I jumped out of bed, ran to the door opened the door, but they'd already gone down the corridor and disappeared out of sight I've got no idea if they went to another bedroom or if they went down the stairwell so I've had to go to reception report it, obviously it's not the receptionist's fault he phoned the police, the police arrived, they've been here two hours, taken fingerprints, everything else. And now I'm stuck in Dresden with no identity, no passport, no credit cards and no cash. Thank God I've got some friends in this city, that's all I can say. So the fact that somebody was able to enter my room, which is supposedly a safe and secure room, and do that while I'm actually in here means that this place gets zero recommendation from me. In fact, I will never stay in an a and hostel again, despite my previous positive um, impressions of various aspects of it. So, yeah, room 619, A&O Hostel, Dresden Hauptbahnhof, is where I was robbed. I guess the law of averages states that it has to happen happened to everybody at some point it's just a massive shitter when it happens to you but hey I'm still alive so now I've got to go to Berlin somehow and work out how to get an emergency travel document book another flight etc what a massive ball ache anyway there you go over and out